In the 1860s, through the exploration of concealing Native American culture, white Americans assimilated Native American children in boarding schools as a way for the children to be accepted in the white society. They wanted the children to learn through the art of education and discipline. They had stripped away the Native traditions, language, and their appearance. Some Native American children would make a mistake of speaking their own language and get punished severely. The white Americans cut off all their long hair, which was a huge factor in importance to the Native Americans. We had all our hair cut off. We were made baldies. We were really bald. And uh, that wasn't a very good feeling to have. And uh, they used to call us uh, mushroom baldies. That's what they used to, the kids on a reserve used to call us. In the 1880s, the United States had a number of 60 boarding schools and 6,200 Native American students. They were taught how to read, write, and how to speak English. They also had religious training in Christianity, which was what the white society had valued. They also had valued order, discipline, and self-restraint. They had instilled in the Indians how to become more self-absorbed and what you value as an individual, which was the opposite of what the Indians were taught in their homeland. They were taught to be selfless and that their land was for everyone. Along the way, the white Americans decided to add other academic subjects like math, science, history, and even art. When the white Americans taught history, they taught it with partiality for the whites. For example, they shared how New Year's was a reminder of how the white people kept their tracking of time. Schools are constantly being built and hospitals added. We bring them in, clean them up, and start them on their way to civilization. When the children weren't in classrooms learning, they were doing their chores. The boys' main responsibilities were forming, blacksmithing, and shoemaking. They wanted the boys to understand manual labor because the schools were supposed to be self-sufficient. When the boys weren't forming or doing their other main responsibilities, they were doing jobs that the white people or the immigrant laborers didn't want to do. For the girls, they had to learn the jobs of the basic white woman. They had to learn how to cook, clean, tailor, sew, and do the laundry for the whole institution. They were the start of domestic labors for white families. The children were taught through military concepts. Their normal day would consist of breakfast, industrial work, classes, lunch, industrial work, and sometimes after school lectures or religion training in the evening. Then they would go to bed. In the 1900s, European Americans wanted more of a religious influence so that they could emphasize the understanding of the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes, and Psalms so that the children could understand the punishment of sins. The white Americans wanted to keep the boys and girls separated most of the time so that they weren't any sexual contact. Sometimes they would even lock the girls in their rooms with no way out, not even if there was a fire. The Native Americans didn't have a specific religion that they relied on. They mostly focused on spiritual practices and environmental elements. They focused on the art of nature. Most of the Indians believed that there was more than one deities, but the European Americans demolished their religious practices in America. Yet, through the agencies of the government, they are being rapidly brought from their state of comparative savagery and barbarism to one of civilization. In 1875, Richard Henry Pratt, the founder of Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Pennsylvania, had returned to the military. He had an assignment where he had to watch 72 incarcerated Indian prisoners at Fort Marion in Florida. While watching them, he started getting the ideas of assimilating Native American children through education. Through the years of 1879 and 1904, Richard Henry Pratt had opened the Carlisle Indian Industrial School, and he started enrolling about 1,000 Indian students a year. He wanted the children to develop not only academic skills, but also vocational. His main goal was to wipe away their Indian identity and replace it with the mindset of a white American. He would put them in uniforms and cut off all their long hair, which they only cut during great mourning. He made them choose an English name to replace their native one. He had often said, I quote, kill the Indian, save the man. He believed that the Indian children got a great teaching and experience to American culture and society. When the Indian children first came into the school, they had to line up and be stripped away of their native belongings. There was often cases where they would have their heads hung low, or cry, or even fight. 
They have their bags, blankets, quilts, necklaces, scarves, anything that was basically from their homeland removed. The discipline that saw through these schools were severe. Some girls would just go to the bathroom and get raped by one of their teachers or staff. There was also cases where the children were fed and became fairly skinny. There was also times when diseases would break out, and since some of the Indian boarding schools were overcrowded, they would pass easily and resulted fast. There was a time in Carlos Hill Indian Industrial School where measles were passed around, and there were nine deaths in a 10-day period. But even though some of the Native American children had a horrible experience through these boarding schools, some actually enjoyed it and said that it was a great learning experience for them. They shared that it had opened their eyes to the outside world and they got to meet lifetime friends along the way. And it had taught them independence and discipline. Academically, it taught them how to read, write, and speak proper English. It also taught them industrial work. After they graduated or went back to their homeland, they were expected to teach their families and friends what they learned, so that the knowledge that was instilled in them is spreading, causing all the Native Americans to become more civilized. The parents and families that had children in the boarding schools were dissatisfied. They felt that the schools were impractical and a destruction to their Indian culture. They started to encourage their children to run away and started teaching their children more of the Native culture during school breaks. In 1893, the court ruled that the Indian children needed to stay in boarding schools more without any big school breaks. It wasn't until 1978 that the Indian Child Welfare Act was passed so that the parents could have legal rights to have a say in whether they wanted their children to be in the boarding schools but or today, not. today, they all speak English and some have taken business courses, home economics, and other higher training. As time went on, the boarding school's popularity started decreasing. Parents were worried that their children's health was in jeopardy. But even though the concealing of Native American culture through boarding schools was losing interest, it didn't stop the Europeans from trying other methods. They still to this day interrogate little tribes to follow the American ways. Native American children grown up and became teachers, teaching their students not only their culture and history, but also what they learned in the boarding schools. They taught them not only their standard native language, but also the English language and other academic subjects. But in 2013, a report titled The State of Education for Native Students showed how Native American and Alaska Native students weren't achieving in reading or math. In Riverside and San Bernardino counties in California, 66,544 students in the class of 2013 had the nationalities of Native American, Latino, Asian, Filipino, African American, and white. Out of the 66,544 students, 380 students were Native American. The graduation rate for the Native Americans in Riverside County was 75.9%, and in San Bernardino, it was 74.6%, but the dropout rate for Riverside County was 20.5%, and for the San Bernardino, 12.1%. The Indian students had the worst dropout and graduation rate in Riverside County out of all the other nationalities. Even through the boarding schools and through the education that was inflicted in the Indian children, the impact that it had in today's Native American society wasn't much. Most of them are struggling in reading and math, and only about 65% of Native Americans earn their high school diploma, and only about 9.3% of them get a college degree. The assimilation of Native American children in boarding schools had a strong effect on the Native American society personally and academically 400 years ago when it had started. But gradually the teachings became less effective towards today's Native American society, but it will always document history for the Native Americans and the European Americans. <laughs>